Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. I've purposely chosen a sunny afternoon so we can get in one of those beehives today and do a split. Yes, we're gonna try to do double or nothing and go from one productive hive to two by getting the hive to divide its resources and create a new queen. Stay tuned. I'm Stacy Tapes. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Okay, welcome back guys. We're trying to get ready here to do a hive split and I just want to go through everything that I have to get ready to go. Obviously most of all I have to have double of everything for a productive hive. So I've got a bottom board which I'm going to take uh, this out so that there's no restriction on airflow because it's warm and it's spring and I'll be putting an entrance reducer across here. Then as you can see, because I'm going to work with the hive to the right, there's a shallow and a deep there. So I'm going to be pulling some frames out of that shallow and here's a shallow box with some extra frames that we can add in. Then I've also got a deep so that I can pull frames out of the deep and put them into this deep box. So there will be a shallow and a deep in the new hive just like there's a shallow and a deep in the old hive, but I have to have enough frames, 10 per box, at least nine, but nine or 10 is best. And so I have to have enough frames to get ready to fill up the gaps. So I just wanted to show you here what I do in off season when I've got extra frames of comb and I don't want it to get all messed up by moths because I discovered early on that you'll get moths that'll come in and destroy your hive. So I've got extra frames and I just want you to see but this is drawn out comb and if you haven't seen drawn out comb before I'm just going to come in close to the camera so you can see it. So here we are. You see that there. And all these cells are going to be filled up by either babies or pollen or honey. So this is a little messy because a few moths started to get in there but the bees will clean that up right away. And just what I want you to note is a giant Ziploc bag here that has been able to keep the moths away from, away from all of the dormant comb that I'm not using. So when we have the deep box on, those will go in there. So we're gonna end up having a mixture of totally empty, like no pollen, no honey, no babies frames in both hives when I'm done. And we'll take the resources in one hive and divide it into two. And the biggest goal is to see baby one day old or two day old larva, which the bees can collectively come together around and say, this one is the chosen one. And they'll feed her and only her royal jelly and she'll become the new queen. And if it all works out right, 28 days from now, we'll have laying queen in both hives rather than just the one right now. So additional to the shallow in the deep box, I then get my hive attic. Now this is a normal box, but I've put a coffee sack on the top and I just want you to see what's inside here is just pieces of wood around the perimeter so that it's in place. And this is gonna be the top of the hive just like that. And the key to this is about reducing moisture in the hive. Hot or cold, that can be a huge problem. So I have sawdust. And I just want you to see, because some of this sawdust is a little bit fine, I'm gonna dump the sawdust in there and I'm gonna shake it a bit on purpose that any sawdust that's really dusty or fine is gonna come out now, not come out on the bees, because that would be really not good for them. And then I'm left with just the bigger, coarser pieces to absorb moisture, which is gonna really be optimal for their health. So that's gonna go on top and then the outer cover. So that's gonna be the whole deal when she's done. And as I get ready to go in, just a few other things to note. I'm gonna put a pollen patty in each of the hives, the one that I'm pulling resources from and the new ones that they have unlimited pollen available to them right away. I'm gonna have my paintbrush and my hive tool just to dust away and move the bees around. I'm obviously gonna have some gear, just my bee suit and my gloves. When it's all said and done, I'm going to take notes so that I can record what I did and why I did it and know what date and all those things I need to go back in to check. But here's the key. Many people will say if you read about moving a hive or changing a hive that you've got to relocate it like several kilometers or at least a mile from where it originally was. You can do that, but I don't have a couple kilometers to move. I want to keep one hive next to the other. So all I'm going to do is put it on the other side of the existing hive. And this is the key at the entrance to the hive. I'm going to put some branches. So when the bees are going to leave the hive, they're going to have to make their way through the branches and that will be their registration point to say, hey, this is home now. 
and the branches will help them get their bearings as they leave and help them have their bearings as they come back and the goal is they won't go back to the hive they just got pulled from they're going to go back to the hive that they've been put into with the branches at the entrance. So it's across the entrance reducer, so the entrance will be small, we'll have branches like this requiring them to kind of fumble their way out and it'll help them register to make their way back. So I'm ready to put on my suit and get in there and get busy. Let's double up a hive. Okay guys, so I'm all suited up. We're planning to take from this hive and create a new hive that's gonna duplicate a queen in this hive here. I'm gonna end up moving the box over to the right on this side later on, but for now, just for ease of use, we're just gonna put that here. I usually keep a big, a metal roof on top of my hives over the winter. It's just finishing up rainy season, so it's always nice to come through and have that out of the way. First thing I always check when I get in a hive is to make sure there's no moisture on the underside of the lid. So you can see there's no moisture here. It's nice and dry, which means there hasn't been any condensation dripping down. That's a really good sign that things are going to be healthy inside. Now, let's just see what we got. Here's my uh, get my hive tool, I'm not totally organized yet. So excited to do this. So we're gonna go inside. This is just the attic cover with lots of sawdust in it. Oh my goodness, there's larvae everywhere. So if you look at this, underside of the box, look at all the bees just under the side of the box here on the bottom. They're just clinging to the bottom of the sack. There's the uh, sawdust that's inside, nice and dry as well. And there are uh, lots of little babies everywhere here. It looks very abundant right away, I'll tell you. Holy smokes. So there shouldn't be a problem finding and confirming that there's a queen in here that's laying well. She's a brand new queen, just born last year. We're just going to go in and see where we're at and decide our steps from there. You never know until you're in. Okay, there's just so much capped comb here, it's amazing. So I'm just going to come in close so you can see a little bit of what I get to see, which is always such a privilege. I'm just going to lean this against me so you can see it well. So right in here, these tall ones that look kind of like bullets in a chamber, that's drone comb. So those are all going to hatch to be boys. There's some more drone comb down here. A little bit also up in this corner if you look right there. There's running honey right here in this corner. Hasn't been capped yet. A lot of running honey all through here. And on the bottom, do you see that? These little cells right here usually suggest they're looking at creating a new queen or they're itching for another in the hive. Now I'm just going to show you in here a little bit if you get the light right. Right in here you can see the different colors of pollen that are in the hive. There's some mustard yellow and some dark orange and uh, oh my goodness right here. Look at all the pollen right here. It's incredible right? There's so much. So lots of life looking really good. No one day old larva in there so this is a nice resource but you'd never get a new queen hatching out of any of the babies that are in here. I've got to have uncapped brood. So we're just going to find a place here to set things. Maybe like this. And this will just be like a holding spot while we try to confirm what we've got inside. Oh, that's upside down. Here, just let me switch this out. There we go. Stay calm. Do it on a warm day. Nobody gets hurt everybody's happy okay there's just so much life on this high on this frame it's incredible Let's see what we got okay this is even more abundant than the previous one again it's all capped which means all full of babies who are going to hatch but they're too far advanced to be ones that would become a queen we've got to find one that's just a tiny little white curly looking worm baby larva that's been laid in the last day or two who can be the chosen one to become the next queen. Now here we're getting into some babies that are uncapped. This is good, okay, just let me get this in for the camera. If you look, right in this area here. Can you see that right in there? I'm just gonna go in really close so that you can see those. A lot of little white squiggly worm guys. So there's some potential queens in there, for sure. Oh yeah, there's so much good stuff going on in this hive. It's very full of resources. Curious to see on the second level how much is going on, but I think there's going to be a lot there too. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's drone comb, there's pollen, there's honey. 
There's just good stuff on every single frame. I'm actually not too concerned about finding the queen. I will show you a drone though, just so you get to see what a drone looks like. There's lots of drones by this time of the season. There's one right there. Do you see him right there? He's quite a bit bigger than the others. Right there. Quite a bit bigger head, bigger body. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Another drone right here. So I'll keep an eye out for the queen, but if I don't find her, it's okay. I know there's a queen that's laying in here, doing well, and I'm just going to divide the resources between both the boxes so that they have a 50-50 split. I'll come back in about a month and see if there's a laying queen in both. I don't have to go on a hunt to discover her. I just have to divide the resources from all that she's set up and built here. There is so much going on. So, a full box has typically 10 frames in it. So this is the shallow box and I've now pulled out five of them. This one has a lot of running honey. It's full of resources, a lot of food on this one. So this is a really good one as well. So I'm just gonna put these all together like that. I'm gonna squeeze them as buddies like that. I don't know if you can see all that, I think you can. So now we've got the mother hive here and I'm gonna just separate these from the wall. You always want your resources for bees just like they want them in the center. That's where they feel more secure and uh, more protected. The center has less temperature fluctuation. It's still freezing at night at my place, but it's really warm during the day by our standards, like maybe up to 20 degrees Celsius. So this has been, you know, all winter, it's been getting stuck together. There we go. So now we've got five frames full of resources in the middle of this one and five frames full of resources in the middle of that one. So now let's just see how that pans out for us. If I take some empty ones like this and just drop them in, they've got more places to put their babies, to put their food, and to just create more of a stockpile of resources. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Nice. I was a little low on uh, on small frames, so I'll just share them like that. There's eight per box, and that's all right. They'll fill up the empty spaces, so I'll have to come back shortly with some new new frames, but I just don't have enough right now. Okay, so this is gonna be the new one. Uh, this is the mature one that we took from, and I don't even know where the queen is, but I've got equal resources. Now I'm gonna go into the bottom deeper boxes, and again, I'm gonna divide the resources equally. And then we're going to walk away and let nature and the wonder of creation do what they do and mesmerize us and amaze us with all those good things that come about by letting nature rock it. Okay, so now we're in the bottom. Okay, so we've taken a top box off each, divided up the resources, and now we're going to do the same with the bottom box. I'm impressed. Even the bottom box is full of resources which means they're coming down to the bottom where they're a little more exposed, a little more vulnerable, and they're happy to do so. Now this is a lot less developed, so I just want you to see this. Nothing is capped here, okay? Nothing is capped. It's all open season. So they're pulling in pollen, pulling in honey. It's their second priority to fill the bottom box because it's more vulnerable and exposed to predators that would come in. There you see it all. Okay, it's beautiful. All right, so now we're just gonna divide up these resources as well. Get it all lined up. Oh my goodness. There's just so much abundance. I want you to understand why I'm doing this today. I had a phone call from a friend today and he called me and said, he's a teacher at a school. There's a swarm of honeybees on our school grounds. Can you help me? And I didn't have time, so I wasn't able to help him. But in short, Hives are getting to the point where they've got so many resources. This is just a mite treatment strip that's expired, so I'm just pulling it out. That's what that is. Honeybees are getting to the point where there's so many resources at this time of the season that they've got to do something. And so if they can't have enough room to multiply and grow, they have to swarm and leave. So I was like, oh yeah, my bees, especially in this hive, they're probably at a point where they're so abundantly ready to move that they need some help. So that's exactly what I'm doing today is I'm just dividing up the resources, getting them set up for success. So we're just gonna put a few of these in here. 
Nice. Oh my goodness. There's so much here, guys. It's hard to move. It's so heavy. <laughs> it's stuck against the wall of the hive. It's beautiful. Sorry, guys. Got to move that a little bit. Okay. So I've got one more frame I need to move into there. And when I've done that, I'll just put in empty frames to fill the gaps. And from there, we can start closing it back up with all the resources they need to have a new mommy. Okay, so this one has four full frames and five empty frames. We'll squeeze them together and they're all happy now. So now I'm just going to top up with clean frames, the ones that have been removed, so that they can keep on building. See that one's wide open, hey? But it's still going to work just fine. They'll, they'll fill that in. They'll be happy to do that. This one's very mature comb, so it looks quite different than the last one. There we go. Just settle that in. I really think that uh, getting honey from a hive is a secondary goal. The first goal is learning and being blown away by how intricate and the beauty of creation. So that's the first reason I do it. I also have a strong sense of confidence. This year I'm going to have a lot of honey because these guys are just banging so beautifully. It's so lovely. Okay, then what I've got is a pollen patty. So I'm just going to rip it in half and the goal here is to give those little beauties as much pollen as they can handle, so they're just drowning in protein for babies. Take out this last little mite strip. There we go. And then I'm going to put a pollen patty on the one that is new. They're a little unsure what to do with that, so I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to relocate this over to the other side. And once I've done that, I'll move the camera around and you'll... No, actually, yeah, I'll do that. We'll bring it around over here and then we'll just put it back together for you. Good. Okay, so now this is the original that's going to need a little bit of extra love. This is where the paintbrush comes in handy. You can't save them all, but you can try to move it out of the way and then quickly put that in and that helps give the bees just a little bit of time to move out of the way. So there we are. Those guys have everything they need to keep on thriving. And then I'm going to put this back on top, which is their attic with sawdust in it. Put their lid on it. But what I really want to do is get you over to the next one to see us putting that back together with the branches on it. So let's get set up and do that. We're just getting set to do the branches here. Pulling all the resources together. So we got the pollen patties in there. Looks like a good time for Mr. Paintbrush again. We'll just paint those off. So the goal is that in 28 days, we're gonna have another laying queen. So both hives will be thriving. Okay, so they're all divided up. Looks good to go. I'm just gonna show you something really cool here. They've been busy in this gap that was here, creating new larva. So I'm just gonna pull it off because it can't really stay there anyway. I'm going to show it to the camera just so you can see it. It's really cool. It's just crawling with all sorts of life. Here, check this out. Do you see that there? Look at all the bees on there. These are all little larva babies. I'll just put that back inside the hive so they're all able to keep on rocking that. Then we're going to put our new sawdust box on to absorb moisture. So here's the sawdust attic to go on. That'll keep them safe, know that they're okay, they're protected. Put our little roof on. And now the key is we don't want them to go back to the original entry, right? Of the other one. So I've purposely put this hive between them so that, uh, you know, they've at least not got exactly, it's about a meter away from the old entrance. And now I've got to find a way at this entrance to, uh, basically inhibit them from getting confused. So I need to find a way and I think I'm just going to get a heavy rock or a brick. I know what I'm going to do. 
I can just push this back a bit. It's very heavy and I'm trying to not jar them because I don't want to surprise them. There we go. We're going to leverage this little crack right at the front and that's going to become our basis for blocking the entrance. Do you see what I've done there? And you got to be ready for a windy day as well. So it's really got to be blocked. So they can still get in and out, but to get in and out, they got to pass by the branches. That's the goal. Okay, and the more they have to pass by the branches, the more likely it'll be that they will come back to the same place where they just left. Here's hoping, right? Woohoo! Okay, guys, sustainable stace almost out. Check what's happened here. Do you see this? The hive that we've just split off from the mother hive, they're really busy. The hive that we didn't interrupt at all, they're just like, no worries, man. And this is the hive we pulled the resources from and they're pretty chill as well. So the ones that have been moved are clearly the most agitated. Now it's time to grab the old notebook, write down a few notes about what I observed and what I saw, what date it was, set a date out 28 days from today, come back in with bated breath and expectation and hope to see queens laying in both hives. Until next time, keep on sustainable stasin. Okay guys, that's a wrap. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Sustainable Stace on splitting a beehive. If you're watching this on YouTube, can you please subscribe down there in your bottom right? If you subscribe there, you'll get a regular email feed every time we post a new resource and you'll know that it's happening and you can stay in touch with Sustainable Stace to be hopeful, helpful, and healthy. Until next time.